The final effort from prolific Star Trek and Twilight Zone writer Jeremy Bixby, this intriguing science fiction tale was penned from his own deathbed in 1998. Years later, it landed in the hands of director Richard Schenkman, who produced the film in the extremely low budget of only 200000 In fact, the dual Panasonic DVX 100s they used for filming is the exact camera I used to own before I upgraded to HD. Following its premiere screening at San Diego Comic-Con in July of 2007, this short 87-minute feature found cult success on digital formats, thanks largely in part to illegal distribution over peer-to-peer -peer networks and long-standing availability on streaming services. The narrative begins with a nondescript schoolteacher gathering his colleagues in his small house for a farewell conversation before he moves to another city. As the titular character David Lee Smith posits a remarkable question to his learned friends, what if a man from the Upper Paleolithic had survived until the present day? The resulting discussion is a deeply involved one. What begins as a scientific hypothetical evolves into an emotional examination of philosophy, religion, and life itself. Smith is calm and patient with his incredulous listeners, weaving a convincing, if unverifiable, account of his 14,000 years on Earth. There's a certain frustration and anguish about his condition that makes him such a compelling protagonist. Although they're hardly well known, the small supporting cast includes some faces that might be familiar to Trekkies, including Tony Todd, John Billingsley, Ellen Crawford, and Richard Riley. No one is given any real opportunity to impress, but their simplistic performances have quick sparks of personality that bring a necessary humanity to the otherwise dry story. You know what could happen? Yeah, the pancreas turns over cells every 24 hours, the stomach lining, in three days, the entire body in seven years, but the process falters. Waste accumulates, eventually proves fatal to function. Now, if a quirk in his immune system led to perfect detox, perfect renewal, then yeah, he could uh, duck decay. Mm, that's a secret we'd all love to have. Would you really want to do that? Live 14,000 years? Well, if I could stay healthy and I, you know, I didn't age, I mean, why not? Yeah. What a chance to learn. When one of his revelations offends the group, Smith struggles over renouncing the truth for their well-being or holding fast to his fantastic tale. There's no visual effects or flashbacks. The fascinating story of a millennium's old caveman plays out in the theater of the audience's mind. It's handled with just the right amount of optimism and doubt, allowing the viewer to draw their own conclusions and questions as the dialogue effortlessly rolls along. Taking place entirely in one confined location and boiling down to nothing but a long intellectual argument, this movie could honestly pass for a TED talk, but therein lies its charm. A subtle score from Mark Hinton Stewart uses rhythmic drums and woodwinds to lay down a mood that grows increasingly more serious by the picture's end. Without any flashy action, big name talent, or even a traditional narrative structure, this unrated experience still manages to thoroughly captivate from beginning to end. A must-watch for sci-fi fans, The Man from Earth is an absorbing thought experiment on the possibility of immortality. I thought it was awesome.